Oh, God bless everybody. This is Roland from Margaret Store, and we are back on our series, Understanding the Bible. So, last Sunday we had did um, Genesis 35. So, that's when Jacob had returned back um, to Bethel, where God, you know, had originally blessed him. You know, where he's fighting with the angel. And he had went back to build an altar of remembrance so now we are in genesis 36 so i thank god for giving me a opportunity <laughs> to share his word and to and to understand myself so we're gonna get right into it because i think genesis 36 is mainly a lot of um let's see it seems like a lot of names because it's saying the genealogy of esau so let's see um what they are some stuff probably must skip through unless something stands out now this is the genealogy of esau I should get my study bible to study bible just in case there's something that i need to explain this is genesis 36 Okay. All right, then. So we're going to start with verse one. Now, this is genealogy of Esau, who was Edom. His name was Edom. So that's where the Edomites came out of. And Edomites were one of the Israelites' um, enemies. Verse two Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, which he was never supposed to do. But that's what he did. So, added the daughter of Elon the Hittite and Aholabama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion the Hivite, and Basel. He had like four wives. And Basmith, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebuchadnezzar. So, the only person who he take that was probably not from Canaan, but it was from Canaan, but was familiar with Ishmael's daughter. Verse 4 now, Ad Ada bought Eliphaz to Esau and Basmith bought Rehul. Verse 5, and Aholabama bore Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. Now, Korah is some, it's, it's going to be a group of people because remember, these, when it's, they're naming sons and naming sons, um, these names are actually going to be people and it's actually going to be uh, um different groups of people so Korah and i think in exodus we're going to see what the group of um people um Korah, what Korah did Korah and his family did and then they were basically they rebelled and the earth opened up and swallowed them because they rebelled against the man of god but it's funny that, that's funny, but it, he came from the genealogy of Esau. <laughs> These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Verse 6, then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the persons of his household, his cattle, and all his animals, and all his goods, which he had gained in the land of Canaan, and went to a country away from the presence of his brother Jacob. So they, um... Even though they were cool, you know, they didn't have any animosity towards each other, but they did not stay together. Esau and Jacob did not stay together. Both went their, went their separate ways. Verse 7, for their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. So, and I'm sure they heard what happened between Lot and Abraham. So they just decided not to even try to live together. They, so they went their own separate ways. And the land where they were strangers could not support them because of their life so and both were exceedingly blessed so it all worked out for esau in the end because when we were reading before if you had uh, uh, um remember how jacob had stole jacob at the time had stole his blessing from the father and 
the father was like, "Oh, I blessed him, and he indeed he will be blessed." It would. It seemed like Esau was never going to be blessed. Nothing was going to work out for him. Things were going to be upside down for him. But he actually. God still blessed him. God still had favor on him. So sometimes oh, you might lose out on something and you think your life is over. Nothing's it's not going to, it's, it's just over for you. There's no hope. There's no nothing. And then look how it turned out for Esau. So sometimes we have to fight it out. You have to fight it out. You have to wait it out. Don't just go quit and go. don't just go do stuff on your own or whatever. Just wait. If you're waiting, because it says, if you wait on the Lord, if you don't believe in God, that's another thing. But if you say, if you wait on, um, if you wait on the Lord, He will renew your strength. Because wait on the Lord, you sometimes you get discouraged, you get tired. But if you wait on God, God is gonna renew your strength. How do you He renew your strength? You might be feeling discouraged, and then a worship song comes on and the worship song is exactly what you're going through at that time that's renewing your strength um you might uh, um hear happy to go on youtube and then you see a message and then that's exactly what you needed here that's god renewing your strength you might go to church if you go if you attend church or your church have a uh, service you probably have a bible study or it could be a prayer meeting and the person pray exactly or the person taught exactly or mentioned something that is exactly what you needed to hear and that's god renewing your strength so god has different ways that's just a few ways god has a million ways to renew our strength but that's how he renews your strength when you're waiting on him whatever you believe in god for that's how he renews our strength in one of the many ways that he renews. That's not exactly what it is, but he has many different ways. Just like he has many different ways to bless you. He has many different ways to renew your strength. So it all worked out for Esau. And if you don't believe in God, so you just wait it out. Don't just quit and give up and stuff like that. Because sometimes, most of, sometimes when you give up, that's when the thing is going to uh, um, open it up, up for you. Not saying that it was going to happen tomorrow, but it might have it might have happened the next week. It might have happened the next month. In a few months, it would have happened. But you give up, you will never know. And you say, oh, people always say that. and then you, But you're never going to know because you gave up. So that's what it is. So it all worked out for Esau anyway. So... D- these were the names of Esau's sons. So they started naming Esau's sons. And these are his different names. In 10 to 11. And he also had a concubine. Now Timna was the concubine of Eliphaz. No, Eliphaz was the son of Esau. So now they first they had named all of Esau's sons. Now he'd been naming he, he, um, the sons, sons of Esau. You know, Esau grandchildren or grandsons. So yeah, that's what we're naming. We're going through Eliphaz and Real was his son. And then they go into the different the different wives. And then Esau had chiefs that came from him. So you have Chief Timna, Chief Omar. Oh, Omar is in the Bible. Well, wow. you never know. So, you know, some people have, have their names. That everybody knows somebody named Omar. So that's in the Bible. That I did not know. So you learn something now every day. Even though it's a bunch of names, I always tend to go through them because you never see, you never know what you'll find. Like a Omar, I never knew Omar was in the Bible. You have Chief Kanaz, Kora, Katam. And chief Amalek. And that's probably why Carl was able to do that rebellion. He was like a chief. These were the sons of Ruel. Ruel had ch- chiefs too. Basimuth. Somehow Basimuth name is very familiar to me. I don't know. I've seen Basimuth someplace.
um and what's this what's this armor like i saw something okay one thing going back to chief of armor like probably the amicalites you know amicalites never liked it israel but they were from the genealogy of things and the thing is they some of these people against you know they became um they became enemies of israel but they were they they from the same you know genealogy in a sense it's just that is different because they just um were um created by different you know esau went out and he got his wives from the land of canaan he didn't get his wives from the um from his father's where his father father came from where um abraham came from where I, um, isaac was born where that but where he was actually supposed to esau was actually supposed to go back to where abraham's family was and then go get a wife there but he didn't do that so he got wives from canaan so that's another culture and then because of that other culture they grew up and that's why they became um enemies but they in actuality these people were all family but they couldn't see eye to eye because they had they were they have one culture from the father esau and they have culture from their mother so a lot of um this already so you have to find a common ground that's why it's not good for you to be a christian and then um the person to be a muslim or buddhist because it's like two different if we're talking about religion it's like two different um religion because it believes in two different things so what is the common ground so if you're going to do that you would have to find what common ground because that is what you're going to have to teach your children you know that's what you're gonna have to teach your um children just like uh if you choose if you are american and you choose to marry somebody from nigeria and so if you guys have to have a common ground to that you both agree on to raise your children to raise your children if not it's going to be a lot of chaos in your house so whatever you plan to do because anybody tell you not to take um go if you want your christian you want to go marry a muslim you nobody tell you not to do that but know that um, if you plan to have children, you need to have some type of common ground between you and your significant other. So, more son, the more sons of the, the grandchildren of um, grandsons of Esau. Um, okay. More sons, the kings of Edom. You no, know, Edom became a country. I guess yeah, country. So verse thirty-one. Now these were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. So the Edomites already had that king. They've been had that king. 32 Bella the son of Beor reigned in Edom and the name of his city was Din Haba. 33 and when Bella or Bela because I don't think that because I guess that's a guy so it wouldn't be Bella it was Bela died Jobab the son of Zerah was reigned in his place 34 when Jobab died Husham the, of the land of Timonites reigned in his place remember see all these people are people names but they became lands verse 35 and when husham died hadad son of bedad who attacked midian in the land of, in the field of moab reigned in his place and the name of the city was of verse 36 when hadad's died samla of mas masrika reigned in his place 37 and when Samla died, Saul of Rehoboth by the river and reigned in his place. So that's not Saul. You know, Saul that we know of. Well, to the first, the Saul um, who tried to kill David. That's one Saul. There's another Saul, you know, who's persecuting, persecuting the Christians. But, you know, his name between Paul. So, I don't know. A lot of Saul... People who named Saul been doing a lot of shady stuff. 
So it's just different people that reigned and then they took over. That's basically what's 30, what is this? 31 through, um, oh, 39 says. So now coming to the end, and then, the, you know, more chiefs. So they had kings and chiefs. Kings and chiefs. And then all of them were chiefs or kings according to wherever they lived in the land that they possessed. So remember when, see, of course he was, uh, um, when Esau moved away from Jacob, wherever they went, it was someplace big because, you know, Esau had a lot of stuff. So in those, in that place and the different sons that he had and different, and the sons of his sons, so they created little, I guess, countries and places. And then they, you know, got wise and created children and created a life and a country for the, each of those things. So that's, that's, what was this? That was Genesis 36. Even though it was a lot of names, it was still had something we grasped from it, um, the lesson. So even though you may see it's a lot of names, or because long time when I was uh, first uh, became a Christian, when I would see all the names, I would never read it. I'd be like, oh, that's not important. But in the midst of it, in the midst of all those names, there's something you can learn. There's something that can stick out. There's, God can still speak to you. Because remember, the Bible, the Word of God, which is the Bible, is living active. So it has a way of teaching you and uh, um, make you understand like when you get your revelation, you could see you know, oh, just a bunch of names and then God give you a revelation in a bunch of names. Because you could read it, come back and read it, and then you see something I didn't even touch on. Because that's how God works. So anyway, so we're going to close out. I'm going to close out with invitation to anybody who, um, who I guess, who feel that they need a savior they would like to accept jesus christ as their personal savior um you don't just feel that is you know throughout your life different people have planted seeds into your life speaking different things and then one day first there's a first seed that planted whether it's by your parents or whether it's by a church or whether it's by a neighbor whatever and then different people that speak into your life or talk to you about Jesus then that seed is being watered and then one day one day you might hear a sermon you might go someplace something might happen to you and then one day you just want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior that's usually how it happens and different things like that because we don't automatically want to go you know, accept Jesus Christ as a person. It's a series of events and series of stuff that happens. And then that leads us up to wanting to accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior. So if that's you, if you feel deep in your heart, you feel the longing, you feel the calling, you feel God calling you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. We, I'm talking to you. And if you want to say this prayer right now, you could say it with me. Father, I thank you. For sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. Thank you for uh, accepting me and loving me until up until this day and forevermore. I confess that I am a sinner and I have done wrong in your sight. And I ask you to forgive me. I believe Jesus died for me and he rose again. And he reigns forevermore. And he's coming back for me. I accept him into my heart. As my Lord and Savior. And I am saved in Jesus name. Amen. If you said that prayer. You are saved. And your name is written in the book of life. That means when Jesus comes and find us, I mean, come, come and get us, find us, you will go with God. You make the effort, you just make the effort. Nobody's perfect, you make the effort to serve God. There's times you're gonna, you might mess up, don't beat yourself up because you're human. But when you do mess up, if you do fall, always go back, 
always get back on track go back to god don't say oh god is don't be putting stuff in your mind because sometimes you put the stuff in my oh god is mad at me god not gonna take me back you put them stuff in your mind god never told you nothing like that because you could always because the name of the lord is a strong tower strong tower that you means you could run to it anytime you need anytime at no matter what time no matter what day so you see stuff that putting you in your, you messed up and you see stuff coming in your head don't go to god god is mad at you god don't want you that's from the devil that is not god because god didn't tell you nothing like that god said he'll never leave you or forsake you you got to stand on the word of god that's why you have to read your bible you may not be able to read your bible for hours and hours and hours but start with just taking a verse and then uh, uh, I'm reading that and then set time aside with anything that's important to you you make time for it so make time for God even if it's five minutes and then it'll become a habit for you but God is not mad at you God will always accept you it's people that put stuff in our, our mind it's people when you do stuff they write you off and they mad at you but God is not a human God will never be a human God cannot be a human so whatever you know humans are, that is not God. God will never be that. He is completely, totally different, totally different from how humans, uh, um, how we humans react with each other. So thank you for watching. And thank you for watching the video. And I'll see you next time, next Sunday. God's willing. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed night. In Jesus' name, amen.